Welcome to my shop. This is Jim Dedman and Sawlogs Plastic Hubs. I hope you enjoy today's video. We're going to try to do something interesting. So pull your virtual chair up, sit down, get comfortable, get you a glass of soft drink, tea, beer, whatever, and hang out with us for a while. So on to the project. Uh, excuse my air conditioning. This is Jim and this is a special video. I am privileged. Uh, Jim Eno's at uh, Tangent Engineering picked me as one of the recipients and testers of his wheel wheels that he's going to be marketing soon. If you've watched YouTube, you've seen these units on um, several different creators and uh, fortunately he picked me for a test unit. So this video is going to show you kind of the unboxing what I ran into, some changes I had to make that's unique to my mill. Uh, I made some, this is a, and by the way, do not take anything that I'm doing this video as a criticism of Tangent Engineering. I'm working with Tangent Engineering and there's been a lot of emails sent back and forth because of some things that it's not recognized in the design process, let's say it that way. Still a good product. I'm, I'm tickled to death to have it. I'm tickled to death that Jim sent it to me. So nothing further ado, we're going to get into this video for you today. Okay, Jim, you see if you put it in that position when it's not in there, it just barely clears. It could be spaced there. But to properly use this, I'm going to shoot a third video. Here we go. What I've determined is it's going to take about about five sixteenths of an inch to make this work. Well, so the problem with the spacer is, is, is there, and I'll show you in a little bit, is a hand clutch. So what we're doing is we're going to use Darwin to make this spacer out of because I've got it. I don't have any aluminum. The other thing is this is his aluminum's anodized, which is really pretty. And I don't want to distract from what he's doing. So there we go. I have his wheel disassembled, so I'm going to get this together and get this here turned down. Setting up to do this, and I thought about rounding it off, and I said, "Well, it's you know this is very I can take pretty healthy cuts, so." There's no need in uh, spending and figuring out of this because I'm gonna face. I gotta turn the chuck jaws around, or I'm gonna face this. And probably what I'll do is I may just what I'm thinking about doing is just going ahead right now. I'm gonna bore the centers of these out. I'm thinking I'm gonna go ahead right now face this sucker first. Face it down to the nut, flip it around. We got a relic board anyway, so I'm thinking about going ahead and getting it the thickness so I'd have a uh, of what I want. So I've got to take a little off now. That way I'll have a nice clean look to it. So I don't want to make the gym stuff look kind of too mucky. And the reason I'm using Dell is A, I've got it too, it's black. So it won't stick out too much from what Jim's product is. And uh, I have sent Jim an email and I will <coughs> I will send him a link to this video once I'm finished. So, Basically what I'm doing right now is I'm just truing this up. The other side I'm going to true up after I machine it. I'll put it in the chuck and get ready to put the board and all that stuff. But this side I'm going to go ahead and true it up before we start. I have one clean side to work with. And what I'm going to do is just go down close to the nut and 
hour of the day. It'll boil, it's going to be a whole. I'm just, what I'm going to do is take this piece of down and more or less and make a little spacer out of it. And uh, then I'll, what I'll do is I have the information. Uh, Steve Barton at Solid Rock, he's had one of these and there's a couple other guys. Uh, Dudley Toolry, he sent him one. These are really good units. And I really like them. I was flattered that Jim contacted me and was wanting me to be one, uh, to give me one. You know, I have such a small channel and such. Uh, now you've seen me do this before. This just like making stoppers to fill bottles and whatnot. And I will, I, I will get this chewed up and make sure I get this big enough. And when you've got material, you kind of got to work what you got. Okay, so let me see where I'm at here. I'm pretty close. I'm going to try to hit this. I don't want to... That's pretty much close. I mean, it's not perfect. It's close enough for Jim Dead. It doesn't work. So now I've got this faced off and trued up on one end. Now we're going to have to bore it and drill it and all this stuff to, to match the uh, unit. So I'm going to go over there and look, look, see where I'm at. And see. Once this gets done, you won't, it, you'll see it, but it won't stick out like it's a clear piece of aluminum. Okay, I'm going to chop y'all around and we're going to face this off. see what I got. I may, I'm going to go a little thicker than I'm guessing, but this piece is three-quarter to begin with, and I want somewhere around five-eighths. If I'm a little over five-eighths, that's going to be good, because I want, I'd rather be out a little further than not enough. And uh, what, I, what I suggested to Jim in the email is once I come up to this, I'll see in the mention, and if somebody has a lagoon and orders one of these, then they can, uh, he can just, you know, either make the hub thicker, or just have a spacer for it like I'm doing. Whichever one he decides to do, it's his problem. Right? This is a devil. <laughs> it ain't nothing. I've done figured all this out. What I'm going to do is just take a cut and see where we at. Let me get speeded back up. A little over an inch more in this. Now I've got the size calculated out. It's uh, it's right. I, I, it's a little over one inch. So what I'm gonna do? So, so I'm about nine sixty there. So I'm gonna get set up and kind of work with it. Got it right on size. First shot. Uh, that just pops in there just like it was made, just like Mr. Jim's product. Let's see if we can get this outside be burning a little bit. Move on to the next problem. What I might do is bore me a, a sleeve or turn me a sleeve to line this up with you. I just stick out the deburr this. So I didn't do it. I'll be right back.
All right, now that's my finished modification to Jim's Tangent Engineering handle. Uh, this is a really good product. And I just sent Jim an email. I'm going to get this video released pretty quickly. Uh, I'm going to tell you, I'm not criticizing Jim's product. It is a really, 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 really good product that Jim has. And it's really handy. The only problem I ran into is this right here. And it's something Jim couldn't anticipate. So, um, you see me make this darling spacer to get it out there. And all I did was add, and this is a piece of three quarter that you've seen what I've done. And it fits right on there. So, I like it. And I think it's going to be a nice addition to my meal. And it's going to be handy. I know Steve Barton and I think Steve Barton, Keith Finner, a few more has had these units, and they're really, really good units. Uh, Dudley Tool Rock, I tell you, Jim's going out of his way to get these things out there to let people try them out. Uh, I'm impressed, and I'm glad Jim picked me to send one of these units to with my little small channel in my backyard. And I really thank him. I did have to go to the local hardware and get some screws. I couldn't get. I had to put this cap screws in mine to make it work. I mean, it's no problem, and I'm not criticizing Jim. Please don't take this as criticism. There's so many of these different meal variations out there. Actually, this one here is a Bridgeport. It has the Bridgeport pattern here. This meal does, and it was this. I, I'm. I haven't really looked at a bridge board up close, but I'm assuming something like this isn't a problem on a bridge board. I don't know about a Wells Index, so Jim's going to have to look into some of this stuff. But, and it's probably why he's sending these out to various different people to see what they have. I think that maybe he's even got one on his way down to Tom Hilltop, and uh, if so, then Tom may issue up some different issues too. Uh, I'm not so sure because. Again, he's got an Excel up. These patterns may be the same, but but your things like where your clutch enhancement, you know how they design the machines. So uh, they're in in lives and video, or parts of it. So I have some notes that's going on in the video. Uh, there's been there's always some viewer questions and there's some typical ones, and uh, Jim sent these to me. So. He basically uh, sent this to keep them getting tongue tied. These will cost $150 a piece shipped when Jim starts selling them. And it'll be free shipping in the lower 48 states. And, that's, and I'm going to tell you, based on making a spacer for mine today, just the time it took me to make the spacer. You can't buy the wheel and do the work and, and find the material and, and all that and count the time. It's a good buy. He's going to be selling these on eBay only and he's setting the format up. He'll have the link uh, on uh, soon. So you can do you can purchase these through eBay. Um, I have his email and I'm going to put his email in my description and underneath this for you so you can contact him with any questions and his phone number. I'll put the contact there. They should be ready to be for sale for 68 weeks. Uh, he's shooting for somewhere uh, June 3rd to June 20th of this year, 2019. So uh, that's some of the questions. Steve Barton had done a lot of his, and I've got a link to Steve's video addressed a lot of his concerns. Uh, I'm going to tell you the only problem I have with this unit is he's worked these around clones in Bridgeport, and my lagoon has a uh, unique feed system on it, and you'll see it in the video what I had to do about making space for to make it work or whatever. But this is a great product, and by the way, I am working with Jim, sending him emails and photographs of what I've done and communicated with him, and I told him I would just go ahead and do this with myself because, you know, he's gracious enough to give this to me, so I'm gracious enough to, to give him some feedback. So when these come on the market in your home shops, guys, if you 
or in your, even actually a production shop like a Bridgeport where you're doing this kind of work every day, uh, this is going to be a real handy thing. This wheel's been put on these mills for a long time. Uh, Jim's got a good product. He's really good to work with. Uh, he's been really up front with me on the emails and he's been really helpful. So I want to encourage you to look into this if you're in the market for it and uh, give, him, give him an email or a call or look for his eBay listing. And I'll tell you what, uh, I'm, proud, I'm proud that I'm a tester of this unit. And by that to being said, we'll see you, you know, I'll, you'll see him a closing. We'll see you in the next video. Guys, give Jim some love there, please. Appreciate you staying through my video and watching it. I hope you learned something or at least got a little bit of entertainment. I have a very small shop here and this is in my backyard and this is my retirement hobby from 40 years of being a machinist and in manufacturing plants. This is a copyrighted production of James Dip, Saw Logs Plastic Hubs. I do appreciate you viewing my video. I would appreciate it if you're not already to subscribe to my videos. It doesn't cost you anything. There's no financial obligation whatsoever. Also, comments are always welcome. Please remember when you do comment, try to keep it respectful. That way I can answer you respectfully and the other people who comment won't be offended. We always try not to offend anybody because we all look at things different ways. With all that being said, I'm glad you come by and pulled your virtual seat up, sat down in your easy chair and watched my video. So again, please tell your friends about it. With no further ado, we will see you in the next video.